In one of my recent videos, I talked about the trouble I had with breaking belts and said I'd update you if I ever had a definite answer why. I never found a definite cause that I could single out for certain, but I did find and examine a few issues, so I'll share my experience here and maybe it will help someone else that's having similar problems. I pulled the entire CVT apart after the last belt failure and began by checking the motion of the torque driver and rear pulley. It moved well aside from some resistance near the closed position. I cleaned the rear pulley assembly and tried again and the sticky spot was still there. The rear seal left marks on the shaft so I removed the seal and checked the pulley again and the resistance was gone. This was a seal from a stock pulley, not a replacement from Melosi, and it was also chewed up from the last broken belt, so I added seals to a list of parts to order. I noticed some mild wear inside of the grooves that I was using in the torque driver. I could barely feel a little rough spot around that area when paying close attention while moving the torque driver by hand. I'm not sure that such minor wear would break belts, but it was near the end of the travel, possibly where my belts were breaking at a bit over 40 miles per hour. I didn't want to put out a large sum of cash for a new rear pulley assembly or torque driver, so I tried to improve this one. I used a diamond burr and a rotary tool to lightly blend the area of the wear to make a smooth pass. I removed as little as possible so it wouldn't create a lot of slop. Then I wrapped a piece of 220 grit sandpaper around a small file and sanded each groove. I worked from 220 grit to 320, to 400, to 600, to 1000, and finally to 1000 grit and metal polish to finish. I moved on and checked the fixed half of the rear pulley over more closely. It was generally in good condition, but one of its bearings felt a little gritty and rough. I got some parts in later and replaced both bearings, since the larger rear bearing had to be removed anyway to reach the smaller front bearing, and Melosi's kit includes both bearings and a new snap ring for the upper bearing. I also got the new seals in for the torque driver and replaced those as well as the O-rings. I greased the pulley and then put it together and it moved well without any hangups. There was wear on part of the contra spring, indicating that the spring had been pressing into itself. I wanted to be sure there wasn't spring bind that could cause problems, so I used the drill press to compress the spring while I watched it. The only contact points were on the very ends, which is normal from what I've seen, so it shouldn't be an issue. I even tried another spring just to make sure I wasn't mistaken, and it was the same. I cleaned the clutch and the bell and reassembled the rear pulley. In the last video I said that I would be replacing the variator because its face was a bit worn. It also had mild wear in the roller paths. The new variator arrived and I noticed that it had a coating on it that my old one never had. Both variators had the same part numbers and design so I thought it may be a quick spray coating that either Melosi or the seller applied. I've used this Molly spray coating on variators before and it had a similar appearance but it wears off on the first ride usually.
I contacted the seller, and they said that's how the variators come to them now, so hopefully it's a quality coating that will last. I also got the new guide bushings in and installed them on the ramp plate before the variator was assembled with the same mix of 10 and 12 gram sliders that it was using before. I checked the fixed half of the front pulley with a straight edge and it had some very minor wear on it. It probably wasn't even necessary, but I refaced it in a lathe to ensure that the face was flat. I don't remember it being broken when I took it apart, but the key for the front pulley was busted when I was checking parts, so I got a new key. I also replaced the variator and clutch nuts just to be on the safe side. I use these Yamaha nuts for the variator because they are made to be softer than the crank and take damage instead of damaging the crank. The new Melosi belts also arrived, so I was ready to get the CVT back together, but I wanted to clean the case first. Brake parts cleaner and a chip brush removed the belt dust and grime, and then I installed the pulleys and the drive belt. I cleaned and inspected the CVT cover before it went back on, and found that the bearing that helped support the primary drive shaft was noisy. I replaced that as well, and then installed the CVT cover to complete the job. I wanted to test the CVT to see if I'd have more trouble, so I put two belts under the seat just in case, and headed to the beach. I left around 10 p.m. and rode at about 50 miles per hour most of the time to the beach. I took a lap around the strip, red light to red light or just cruising, and everything was working fine. I headed home and again ran it somewhat hard to see if it would fail and because it's more fun. I made it back at about 3 a.m., and the only issue I had throughout the night was a noise that I believed to originate from the CVT area. I got some sleep and then popped the cover off to see how everything was holding up. It looked good. Not much belt dust or glazing anywhere. There was some discoloration on the end of the primary drive shaft where it rides in the bearing, so I checked with a spare bearing and found that there is enough play between the bearing and shaft that the shaft can spin inside of the bearing. I assumed that that was where the noise that I heard came from. I only heard it while moving, which makes sense because the shaft should only turn once the clutch is engaged. I placed some one thousandth of an inch thick steel shim stock inside of the bearing and then had to tap the cover on even after heating the bearing a little and cooling the shaft with freeze spray. Some of the shim came out during the process but enough stayed to keep it tight. I still wanted to give it one more test before assuming my belt woes were over so I headed back to the beach. This time it was 95 degrees and sunny, so hours of riding with just stops for gas should push it as hard as it's ever likely to be pushed. Once again I rode the whole way down around 50 miles per hour, aside from going through towns. I made it to the beach and cruised around for a while. I even found a group of scooters to play with.
what better way to test a CVT than to try to race other scooters? The FedEx truck almost tested more than the CVT. After a few laps around town, I headed home. Over 160 miles in the heat and beating on it and I didn't have any trouble with it. I didn't hear the noise this time either, so the shim seemed to fix that. I took the cover off one more time for a quick check. Actually, I had to pry the cover off because the bearing was so tight on the drive shaft with the shim that the bearing came out of the cover and stayed on the shaft. I heated the bearing and then pried it off. I'll need to use less shim material. Or maybe machine down the shaft and make a sleeve for it to get a better fit without this happening. Otherwise, there was a bit more belt dust than before, but nothing out of the ordinary, and the belt had minimal glazing. I took the variator off because I was curious to see how the coating held up. It was worn in the most stressed areas, but still present. I don't think it will be a long time before it's gone, but the last variator made it a lot of miles with no coating at all, so I'm not concerned. Hopefully now I can depend on my CVT to not break belts repeatedly anymore. I'm sure I'll tear up plenty of other stuff though. Thanks for watching.